Hello there. Good afternoon. Happy Magic Monday to the people of Derby. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Brilliant Derby, episode number two. A couple of weeks back on Blue Monday, we launched episode one of Brilliant Derby Project by your very own Dr. Andy Cope. And today we've got another treat for you. Just want to say on behalf of everybody who's working on Brilliant Derby, and there's a lot of fun work going on behind the scenes, that we are coming up with a plan. We've got an absolute treat for you today. We've got our next sessions planned as well. So please make sure that you catch up with the previous session. Please make sure you get involved with this week and know that you've got things to put in your diary going forward. I'm Sanj. I'm your proud host for Brilliant Derby while we kick things off on behalf of Arthur Brilliance. And today we've got your doctor, Mr. Dr. Happiness himself. Andy Cape, sir, are you there? I certainly am, Sanj, yes. How are you, sir? How are you? Good? Yeah, yeah, fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Glad to be here. Got my got my special jacket on. It's, uh, it's an occasion to dress up this for Brilliant Derby. It is, Sanj. Sanj, I can't believe we've even got a theme tune, mate. I just was so excited about it. Yeah, this, uh, the revolution has begun with a theme tune. Brilliant. Yeah. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, Sanj. Might further i've got my special t-shirt on right i've got my t-shirt it's a superhero in training all right in training because i think that everybody watching this you know however old you are and wherever you are we're all superheroes right but what happens is we're pretending to be normal so i think what brilliant derby is is about maybe unleashing that inner superhero that we've all got um and that's that's what we want to help and it's about as you introduced it's about kind of mobilizing the entire city really so i know i did episode one and i'm here again on episode two Sanj. But I don't want to do too many. The idea is that people of Derby step forward and hopefully we're going to deliver something every fortnight for the entire year. So anything around well-being, about positivity, about confidence, about good news stories. So the people of Derby are asking you to join in. So I'm just playing the holding midfielder role. There's a football analogy for you. And I'll just keep it going while we're waiting for the brilliant people of Derby <laughs> to step in. Hey, you're just like uh, Wayne Mooney before he becomes the manager. Just holding back, sitting deep, you know, playing the balls across, just just hanging in there. <laughs> in fact, like, it sounds. Let me take you a, another analogy. I think it's a bit more. It's less like football, actually. I'm thinking it's a bit more like Lewis Hamilton, right? I don't know much about okay. F1. But I know that Lewis Hamilton drives a Mercedes, doesn't he? And he keeps winning things, right? So if you think, let's assume he's at, at Silverstone, right, trying to win the British Grand Prix. What Lewis Hamilton does, I don't know, what, 55 laps of Silverstone? So he goes around as fast as he can, you know, tearing around Silverstone as fast as he possibly can. But here's the thing, Sam. If, if Lewis Hamilton doesn't two or three times come in for a pit stop, if he doesn't come in and get his tyres changed and get refuelled, not only is Lewis Hamilton not going to finish the race, he's, he's not going to win the race, he's not going to finish the race, is he? And I think this is a little bit like Brilliant Derby, is that this is your pit stop every fortnight, Right. Let's have half an hour where we just focus on something and then refuel yourself and then back back out on, on, into Derby to make it a better place. Yeah, absolutely. And that's a that's that's a great analogy. And I know you're gonna you're gonna take this analogy well into 2021 with Lewis Hamilton. It's gonna get refined and refined and refined. But one more question I have for you before I let you loose on your on your uh, race this afternoon is. Mm -hmm. For those who are tuning in for the first time to Brill Derby, just give us a little reminder because you've mentioned there that there's going to be, you know, Art of Brill for a little bit, there's going to be the people of Derby. What can somebody do at home who's just tuning into this now, you know, Monday afternoon, do, you know, to get involved with Brill Derby? What can they do? Um, well, there's going to be a ticker tape. The email address there is we do want people to get involved. Um, so there'll be there's a website, there'll be a YouTube channel. It's going to be broadcast every fortnight on a Monday at 2 p.m., you know, for as long as we can keep it going. But ultimately, I think what I want people to do is get behind it and talk about it and share the videos with your children. And I want these videos to be shown in school, right? So we've got some great top tips coming up, right? When we deliver the content, the aim is to kind of give the people of Derby a spring in their step and a... And a I think it's not just about staying on your feet, which is a challenge in the modern world, but it's like having a spring in your step while you're on your feet, isn't it? And that's really what it is. And I don't care who presents this, right? I, I, it shouldn't be me. It should be, I don't know, your next door neighbour is an amazing person. Let's get them on, right? Let's get the oldest person in Derby on. Let, let's hear some stories from Derby back in the day. Let's get some primary school kids on and tell us what's going on in your neighbourhood and community that's awesome. Let's get the charity sector involved. Let's get business people involved. And let's share what's best about Derby, what we're most proud of about Derby, so that everybody can actually, you know, I want people to be talking about Derby 
outside of Derby, but for the right reasons. I want the rest of the world <laughs> to be going, what's going on in Derby? It's buzzing, right? And that, and, and like I said in episode one, mate, we can wait forever for that to happen, all right? And we'll probably die waiting. Or we can create it. We can start making it happen. And I think the revolution starts with us individually. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, again, you know, for, for those those at home, there's so much amazing work that's going on behind the scenes, not just with Brilliant Derby, but in Derby in general, which we're going to try and make louder, give you more platform to that. And and just, you know, shout about all the all the amazing stuff that's happening across Derby, like Andy said. So without further ado, Dr. Happy, I'm going to hand over to you now for your session. I'll see you at the end to, uh, to poke you and prod you a little bit and uh, enjoy it. Okay, fella, thanks. So let me get onto the PowerPoints then. Right, so we call it lockdown doesn't have to be meltdown because essentially what we can't do is publish what Brilliant Derby is going to be for the next six months because of the slightly bonkersness of the situation that we are kind of just going to craft it month by month. And because currently, um, you know, Feb uh, February the 8th, we're all locked down. So I thought we'd call it lockdown doesn't have to be meltdown. But of course, most people in 2020, it was a tough one. So what we kind of pitched in episode one is that we therefore with a barge pole we tentatively open the door into 2021 20, let's see what's let's see what it's got in store and as we open the door into 2021 we find it's exactly the same as 2020 <laughs> so we're still locked down we've still got masks on we're still furloughed we're still homeschooling the kids still can't go and see my mum so what happens is if we're not careful we can get stuck in what we can't do and what we're trying to do is kind of reshape that into what we can do. And of course, that, that makes me laugh. That's Wilson working from home. Um, and I think ultimately we find ourselves in this very bizarre situation. So what I want to do on just on this one, just for a few minutes, I don't want it to be a long drawn out video. This, I'm, I'm going to take, Sanj, two top tips on well-being tips from Japan. Because Derby obviously is the headquarters of, of Toyota in Britain. Very proud at Burniston to have Toyota there. So I thought, you know, a little doffing our cap to the, to the Japanese there. I'm going to take two top tips from Japan. But can I just start with this one, right? And it's not a top tip, but it's just a reminder about the new normal. I mean, that's a ridiculous picture, yeah? But this so-called new normal. And we're still talking about the new normal nearly a year after the new normal kicked in. And the good news and bad news, let me remind you about the new normal, right? So the bad news is that even 10 months down the line, 11 months down the line, we're still not sure how it's going to end. We're still not sure what the new normal is. So it hasn't really yet shaped and formed itself. And the good news is that we don't know what the new normal is. It hasn't yet shaped or formed itself. And therefore, and this is always from here, Sand, right, is that I think that that gives us a chance to shape what our new normal is for us. Right? And, and what I want to do is propose a new normal to you that is like is a new improved version of us. I mean, wouldn't it be really cool? And it's, I know this is a tough ask because there's a lot of people struggling at the moment. But wouldn't it be really amazing if we could come out of lockdown in a better place than we went in it? And I think I think that is pro potentially possible. But we need to know how. So what Brilliant Derby gives us is a few hows. So let me take. So I said there's just two Japanese concepts that I want to share with you. Um, and then and then we'll let you crack on with the rest of your day. And the first one is uh, encapsulated in that in that pottery there. And it's the Japanese art of Kintsugi. And th this is really powerful stuff. All right. So I um, remember when you were little and you went to a museum and there was always a pottery section in the museum that when you when you're seven, it's not very interesting, is it? So you, so you leg it straight past all the pots to get to the shop at the end to buy your plastic dinosaur. And you'll have missed this, right? And that is, this is the Japanese art of Kintsugi. It's about 400 years old. And as you can see on the picture there is that at some point, that pot has fallen on the floor and smashed into lots of pieces. And what they do in Japan, in Kintsugi, is they piece the, they glue the bits back together to create the pot again. But as you can see, what they do is they put gold color in the glue. So that every imperfection is deliberately highlighted in that pot. And the reason I love Kintsugi and the reason I just thought I'd introduce it while we're locked down is this, is that pot is deemed more beautiful after it's been put back together. And I think there's something in that, Sam. There's something in that about people, right? Is that is that are we not all human Kintsugi? Are we not all of us? Every single one of us watching this, at some point in your life, something terrible will have happened. You lost somebody that you love or, or you lost your job or, 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 or you, a relationship broke up. And all of us, all of us have been in pieces. So what we do, of course, is then we pick ourselves back up together and we put ourselves back together and we rock up at work or at school with a watery smile on our face and we're back in the game. Now, my point about Kintsugi, my point about kind of lockdown, really, in the state we're in at the moment is, is um, 
I'm not asking you to brag about your imperfections. That's not the point. My point is this, is that what broke you has made you who you are. And I think that is supremely powerful, Sandra. I really do. So that I know it seems bad at the time when you go through these traumatic times and we're going, we've been through a traumatic time for nearly a year now. And there's people feeling broken. I understand that, right? But with hindsight, what broke you has made you who you are. Therefore, maybe we could come out of this stronger. Maybe the scars are the beauty. Maybe, all right? Now, I think that's really powerful. And the Japanese don't really apply it to people. But I think we could apply it to people. However, let me give, let me, that's 400 years old. And it's about pots in Japan. So you might be thinking, what's it got to do with us? Well, let's bring it up to date. Let's bring it bang up to date right now, okay? And the message from the media and from Instagram and from social media and from the billboards and from the magazines there, the message very loud and clear, and it's a very harsh message, and it's not a very subtle message, but the message is, you're not good enough. You're not enough. All right? So therefore, if you can see in Cosmo there, there's 21. So you've got to do 21 things this month because you're not currently good enough. All right? So and it, I, this is me doing a very lazy Google search to find stuff, right? This is a monthly magazine. And there's 383 things you've got to do this month because the message is, well, you're not good enough at the moment, are you? And then it gets really silly, right? It gets really silly. It's not the number that upsets me on that magazine. It's the title. All right? And I guarantee that that magazine won't be read by 17-year-old girls. It'll be read by 13-year-old girls pretending to be 17, yeah? And the message there on the front cover, oh, you know, girls, you're not good enough, 526 things. And um, we're wondering... Right, we're wondering why people are coming through the system, young people coming through this, well, all of us coming through the system with anxiety. And we're looking at airbrush perfection on Instagram and, and we're looking at that and we can't be that. It's not even real, but we're comparing ourselves with perfection and we can't achieve it. And now all the, all the women are going, oh, is it just women? And the lads are going, no, hey, fellas, look. Guys, it applies to us as well. Guys, if you want to look like him, you've got to get busy because it's a monthly thing, you know what I mean? So what I'm trying to do, Sandra, in a kind of roundabout way, is suggesting that where Brilliant Derby is coming from is the other end of the spectrum, right? The message that you don't ever hear from the media, the message that you've never seen on a billboard and you've never seen on an advert, but it's the truth, Sanj, and it's three little words that we're basing Brilliant Derby on. And it's three little words that the world's trying to make you forget, right? You are enough. Not only are you enough, you're amazing. You are a superhero in training, all right? You're incredible, but the world is very good at making you forget that, all right? So what Brilliant Derby is gonna try and do is put that back where it truly belongs. But you never hear that message on the on an advert, do you? So Sam, you've never kind of watching Coronation Street of an evening and the adverts come on. There's never ever been an advert that says, hey, you, and you go, what, me? Yeah, you sitting there in Derby. Do you know what? You're enough, am I? Yeah, yeah, you're fine, you're brilliant, you are, am I? Yeah, I mean, well, you smell all right, don't you? You're okay. You've got enough shoes, haven't you? Got enough trainers and your car's nice enough. It's not the latest car, is it? But, I mean, it gets you to work and back and, and it's got a, a, a brilliant little kind of place to hold your coffee and a secret sunglasses compartment. That's all you ever wanted in a car, really. And your watch is okay and your mobile phone's not the latest, but it's fine, isn't it? The contract's perfectly okay. So you don't need any more clothes. You don't need any more stuff. You're perfectly fine. Crack on. You've never seen that advert, right? Because that advert doesn't exist. But whoever wrote that advert will be sacked for telling you the truth. So we're going to tell you the truth, all right? Now, of course, it's quite easy to forget that. So here's, here's a really, really fabulous top tip. It's made a big impact on me. Um, now, I know there'll be some senior manager at Toyota who's actually Japanese, who speaks Japanese, will know what that means. I Excuse the pronunciation. It's something like Ichigo Ichi. -e. All right. Now, let me explain it because I think it's perfect in lockdown. Ichigo Ichi -e, essentially, it's one of those words that hasn't got a direct English translation. It dates back to the ancient Japanese tea ceremonies right, where the village would get together for an hour and have a nice cup of tea and chat. And it's a kind of big communal thing. And Ichigo Ichi -e literally means one time only. All right. So what does that mean? What that means is that in the Japanese tea ceremony, everything stops. People are brought together. The community is brought together and and they're fully there for each other. They're fully focused on this tea ceremony because you can have the same tea ceremony the next day in exactly the same room with exactly the same people at exactly the same time. And yet it will be a different vibe and a different atmosphere. So this tea ceremony today is one time only. I right? know. So what's that got to do with lockdown? Well, pretty much everything. Right? I've been, I'm locked down in my house. I've had, 
it, when you're locked down with people and you and you can in a confined space with people, you can start to take things for granted. Right. So, for example, right. So this morning, I I sat in my kitchen. I had porridge with my wife again, Sand again. All right, because it's the same porridge. We sit in the same seats. We have the same bowls and the same cup of coffee. And if you're not careful, it can get a bit droll and a bit mundane and a bit samey. But Ichigo Ichi-e means that actually porridge with my wife this morning is one time only. So we might have porridge again tomorrow morning, but that, but we're not going to have it again. You know what I mean? It's like this is it. So therefore, I'm going to be fully present. Right. It's not mundane. It's not boring. It's not repetitive because it, it's one time only. And I tell you what, Sandra, I've only known this two or three months and it's made a huge difference on me being fully present with the people that I'm locked down with. So the same when I have tea tonight, my wife and my son tonight. Right. We'll be sitting there, but I'll be fully present. I won't be on my phone. I won't be scrolling on the phone. I won't be trying to watch the TV while I'm eating. I'm going to be fully present. And instead of my days becoming the same old routine, the same old routine, like Groundhog Day, which it can be in lockdown, Sanj, it's one time only. Every situation is one time only. So be fully present for the people that you love. And I think that's had a big impact on me, mate. That's had a very big impact on me. So, and here, here's, here's, I think, I like that. I think that's a really cool sort of, um, uh, sort of PowerPoint. But what I, I've worked in personal development, Sanj. I got myself a PhD in well-being and human flourishing and happiness. And I've worked for about 20 years in personal development. And what I found is a lot of people want change. They demand change. But they don't want to change. Right? And I think <laughs> Brilliant Derby is a little bit about making sure the change starts with us. All right? And that, I just wanted to finish with that, fella. I want to finish with that. It's a lovely quote by a lady called Margaret Mead. It's like, I, I'm almost going to steal it and make it almost the motto for Brilliant Derby because we're back to the point whereby, what are we going to do? Put my happiness on hold until everything goes back to normal. I'm going to put, I'm going to stop being, I'll, I'll be happy at the end of COVID. I'll be happy when I'm on holiday, right? And we're waiting and we're waiting and we're waiting, aren't we, Sanj? And I think we've got a big wait problem, a W-A-I-T problem. And I think, There'll be enough people in Derby who'll get behind this. I know there will. There's enough brilliant people out there. It doesn't matter how you feel right now, whether you're on top form or whether you're ground down, whether you're sick and tired of being sick and tired. It doesn't make any difference. There are things that you can learn from the science of well-being and human flourishing that will give you a better chance of having more great days and fewer bad days. All right. And that's essentially where we're coming from. And more people get behind it then the bigger the revolution and the more noise we can make. So I'll leave it for there. I'll leave it there. There he is. Nice one. Nice one, Dr. Andy. Fantastic. Two top tips there. You are enough and be in the moment. Okay, this is a one-time life that you're going to live, so make the most of it while we can and enjoy the little different things, even on the days which maybe feel a bit samey. Same, same, but different. Same, same, but different. Sand, can I leave? Can I, I'm quite keen. that I, I want you to tell people what's happening in two weeks' time, so we're going to do a trailer for that. Absolutely. But can I, just, yeah. I can see that there's an email address going along the top there. Yes, at brilliantdarby.org. So if you're interested in being part of the revolution, if you can drop us an email or go onto the website and there's a contact form on there, that would be fantastic because we're trying to mobilise the city and we want to know who's up for it and who isn't, all right? But maybe also on that email, because we've got some prizes to give away as well, but we've got some happy T-shirts and some stuff to give away. And I'd love for schools to get involved in this as well. What I'd also really like to share on the website are things that you have learned from 2020 that will help you in 2021, right? So top tips from 2020 that you've learned that will help you in 2021. And I know that 2020 was a tough year for most people. But remember the Kintsugi, tough, sometimes the tough thing is, is where you learn the most. So what have we learned in 2020 that will help us in 2021? And then we'll be able to share some of those at the next session. Speaking of which, Sanj, when and who and what is the next session? Yeah, I'm going to give you an advanced warning, Andy. I'm going to ask you in a second your top tip or one thing that you've learned from 2021. But in terms of the next session... Next session is going to go live on the 2020, oh my God, 22nd of Feb, 22nd of Feb by the wonderful Susie Lavington, who, you know, you know Andy very well, co-author of your How to Find a Brave, amazing book. 
um, that's aimed at teenage girls, but the, the topic in the, and the webinar will be relevant for every single human about how to find your brave. So Susie's a, a lovely human and that'll be happening on the 22nd of Feb. So we're super excited for that. Cool, fantastic. Well, my, I want to say, say loads in 2020, Sanj, but I think one of the biggest things, uh, other than Ichigo Ichigi, which has absolutely had a profound effect on me, by the way, in terms of being there fully present, um, I think just nature. I think I think everybody's aware of nature, um, and I know it's February now, but and 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 in a, soon it will be a year into into um, a pandemic. But I can remember last spring, Sanj, last spring when we were locked down one. I can remember thinking. Is the blossom and the trees always this amazing? Are there always this many butterflies? I've never seen so many bumblebees in my life. Are they? Have they always been there? And I've been so busy, I've never noticed. And I think the answer to that is yes. <laughs> so what I have learned is to slow down, be in the moment a little bit more, and be in nature a little bit more. No, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. I just want to just want to ask you one more point, Andy, in terms of. The getting involved. It's important here that those who want to get involved can get involved in lots of different ways. That doesn't just mean presenting or contributing in terms of content. We're also looking for a presenter, you know, a sound equivalent of Derby. We're looking for somebody who's very, you know, enthusiastic about IT and can produce this kind of setup. So whatever it might be, don't think that it has to be camera facing because there's lots of other things that you can do to shout about Brilliant Derby, you know, whether that's sending messages or even behind the scenes too. So if you're watching this and you're curious and you want to get involved, there's so much scope for you to get involved. So please feel encouraged in any way to, to email that email address at the top. Yes, at brilliantderby.org. Fantastic. And please, everybody, if you've enjoyed the message, uh, please share this video with as many people as you can. And get it, let's get it going in schools as well, because I think at the moment, you know, we're trying to make it school friendly also. So wouldn't it be great if this is beamed into assembly and kids understood they were enough? And kids understood the power and the presence of Ichigo Ichi e and, and being in the moment and being present for their families too. Hey, I'm just thinking, thinking, Leo, we could get, um, at one point, you know, children to design their own magazine covers. You know, teenage That's... version of that, what the teenagers Perfect. really need of Derby. Perfect. Fantastic. Dr. Andy Cope, thanks so much. Thanks to everybody who's watching this. Happy February. See you again in two weeks with Susie. And uh, wish you the best. Stay well, stay safe, and stay brilliant. Cheers, Sanj.